Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. I'm going to jump right to it today, folks. I was having a conversation with my brother in Christ, uh, Tyler, over at Generation 2434 channel. If you're not subscribed to him, uh, you need to. He's an awesome brother in the Lord. He loves watching for the soon appearing of our King, just like I do. Uh, and he does great videos. Uh, that's Brother Tyler over at Generation 2434 channel. I was having a conversation with him uh, today, but also for the last few weeks now. And uh, we've been talking about how, you know, what's going, what's going to happen this uh, fall at the United Nations at the upcoming summit. They're actually calling it the Seven Year Rescue Plan Summit. Uh, is absolutely huge. Because not only does it mention the number seven, which is absolutely huge, and I'm going to get that in a minute. Again, they're calling it the Seven Year Rescue Plan Summit. But also, they're going to be proclaiming peace and safety or peace and security at this coming summit. And I'm going to discuss why that's huge in a second as well. Again, the United Nations came out uh, a couple weeks ago right on their own website, like you see on the screen here, and they said we need seven years of accelerated transformative action to achieve SDGs, which stands for uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Pay attention very carefully to this, folks. I'm going to read some of this to you. Almost eight years have passed since the international community agreed to take bold and transformative steps to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, a plan of action to secure the rights and well-being of everyone on a healthy, striving planet. Today, at the halfway point to 2030, that promise is in peril and a fundamental shift is needed in commitment, solidarity, financing, and action to put the world on a better path, and it is needed now. The SDG Summit in September 2023, which is actually going to be held September 18th to September 19th of this year, 2023, right after the uh, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Trumpets, must signal a genuine turning point. It must mobilize the political commitment and breakthroughs our world desperately needs. It must deliver a rescue plan for people and planet. At the center of this rescue plan, Heads of state and government must recommit to seven years of accelerated, sustained, and transformative action, both nationally and internationally, to deliver on the promise of the SDGs. So for those of you that do not know what Agenda 2030 is, back in 2015 is basically when the globalists, the world leaders, and elite really started going crazy and trying to make these huge pushes and goals uh, to achieve a basically a one world government by the year 2030. So here we are now in 2023, what they're calling the halfway point, because again, this whole push really started basically in 2015. And here we are in 2023, the halfway point. We have seven years to go to the year 2030. And here they are very clearly coming out and saying, that at this year's summit in September 2023, right after the Feast of Trumpets, it must deliver a rescue plan. They're calling it a rescue plan for people and the planet because they're saying you know, our world's in peril. We need drastic action right now. And they're saying that we must recommit seven years of accelerated, sustained, and transformative action. So why should we be paying attention to this? And what is so significant? about the number seven, especially seven years? Well, I'll tell you why. When you go to the book of Daniel, chapter nine, verse 27, turn there and let's read this together. And he, this is referring to the future Antichrist who has not been revealed yet. He will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. And he, the future Antichrist, shall confirm, the original translation of that word confirm, simply put is 
to strengthen or great or to make greater. And he, the future Antichrist, shall confirm, strengthen, uh, make great or greater, the covenant with many for one week. This week here is referring to a week of years. Now, when we talk about a week, we talk about, you know, Monday through Sunday being seven days. Uh, but this is referring to a week of years, specifically a seven-year time frame. So let's put it all together. And he, the future Antichrist, shall confirm, strengthen, or make great or greater the covenant with many for seven years. And in the midst of the week, the three and a half year mark, he, the Antichrist, shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So this week here, mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, it's a seven-year time frame. So when the future Antichrist comes onto the world scene after the rapture of the church, he's going to confirm something, make something that's brought out. He's going to strengthen it, make it stronger, make it greater, and it's going to involve many. And when he does that, when he confirms this covenant with many for a seven-year time frame, specifically seven years, a week of years, that will start Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. And in the middle of this week, the three-and-a-half-year mark, that is when the Antichrist will walk into the newly rebuilt temple and declare himself as God in what is known as the abomination of desolation. Also, when you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 15, we read, Because ye have said we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we in agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So I just shared with you the first thing we should be paying attention to is what's going to happen this fall, this September, at the United Nations. They're calling for a seven-year, I talked about why that's significant, seven-year rescue plan summit. Well, some people say, well, Chad, Israel's not even involved in this. Well, how can you say Israel is not involved in this when Israel is part of the United Nations? But here's the next thing I want to talk about. Not only are they calling for a seven-year rescue plan summit at this uh, United Nations summit in September, but also they are going to be calling for peace and safety or peace and security. Folks, when you go right to the UN's website, especially they're talking about the upcoming seven-year rescue plan summit that's going to be held right after the Feast of Trumpets this year at the United Nations, you scroll down to the, the part that says global issues, circled right on the screen here. Uh, peace and security, it says right there. We're going to talk about why, about why that's huge in a second. And then the next part, to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. We're going to talk about that word scourge and why that's huge as well. Are among the, very, among the first very words of the UN Charter, and those words were the main motivation for creating the United Nations, whose founders had lived through the devastation of two world wars, by 1945. So why are the words peace and security or peace and safety absolutely huge? Well, when you go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 to 4, the apostle Paul records the following. For when they shall say peace and safety, or another translation renders it peace and security, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But she, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So we are told very clearly that when they will be saying peace and safety or peace and security, then sudden destruction is going to come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But who guess who will be escaping? Those that are born again believers in Jesus Christ. They're going to be raptured. The believing will be leaving, but the rest shall not escape. Going back to the UN's website, uh, on the part we talked about peace and security, or peace and safety, why that's huge. 
And every year in the fall, usually right around the Feast of Trumpets, is when the United Nations is declaring peace and safety or peace and security. Uh, but again, from their own website, to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. Now, why is that word scourge so important? Because going back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we in agreement that when the overflowing scourge, there's that word, shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. But it doesn't end there. When you go to Isaiah 28, 18, just three verses later, we read, then your covenant with death will be annulled and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. Folks, I don't know why more people are not paying attention to this. At the United Nations this fall, right after the Feast of Trumpets, when the United Nations is going to hold their yearly summit, this year they're calling it the Seven Year Rescue Plan Summit, which I talked about why the seven years mentioned is absolutely huge. They will also be proclaiming peace and safety or peace and security. And we must always go back to what scripture says, folks. But scripture's confirming this. We have a seven year time frame mentioned here, a seven year rescue plan summit, and peace and safety or peace and security is being proclaimed at this year's United Nations summit. So am I saying for sure that the tribulation period is going to begin this fall? The seven years mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27? Am I saying 100% that it's going to start this fall? No, I'm not. We can't be dogmatic about that. But what I'm saying, as someone who's watching for the Lord's soon return, when scripture says that we will see the day approaching, those of us that are watching, the children of the light, we will see the day approaching. Here we see a summit coming up called the Seven Year Rescue Plan Summit, where they're going to be proclaiming peace and safety. It's something that we need to be watching because this could very well be it. And again, for those that say, well, Israel's not involved in this. Well, absolutely they are because Israel is part of the United Nations. Not only that, Israel is also part of Agenda 2030. And what we know, according to Scripture, again, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, it's when the Antichrist confirms a covenant with many. There's going to be many involved. What do you see at the United Nations? Many are involved. And if we know the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ needs to occur before the Antichrist is even revealed and before he confirms the covenant with many to start this final seven-year time frame, this seven-year tribulation period. How close are we to the rapture? What we see right now, what's coming up this year at the United Nations in the fall, in September, where they're going to be going over this seven-year rescue plan summit and proclaiming peace and safety. Could this be it? Absolutely. Maybe it's not. But I'm watching with you guys, and it's all lining up perfectly. All I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now, and you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world at everything occurring and look at what the Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back, and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. 
If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God, and our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. He is the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming, and he's coming one day, very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me, and God bless you all.